Welcome, cadets. Today is the third of three lectures about species that are new to the galactic community, but you are likely to encounter at some point in your careers, but who are not yet part of the Galactic Senate. Today's lesson is about a species that refers to itself as humans. They are from an average world orbiting a singular yellow star at the edge of the galaxy. The next three hours will go into the basics of their world and the technical requirements of their survival. We will cover everything known about them as an aggregate mass. Two hours and 45 minutes later. Now that we have covered the most pertinent background information, let's take a look at many examples of humans. Note that they are an unobtrusive size, being smaller to the median of species who are members of the Senate. Unlike most of the primate archetype species in the Senate, humans have only two upper limbs for manipulating and controlling things, and two limbs specifically used for locomotion. While some individuals can use their locomotive limb ends to pick things up, it is not universal among their species and is often referred to, by them, as a stupid party trick. We have yet to decipher what that idiom means, but it is clear that humans think having two limbs dedicated to locomotive purposes and two dedicated to manipulation of the environment rather than four fully adaptable limbs is perfectly normal. They have no tails. We are unsure how they counterbalance themselves when doing work in precarious locations without a tail, but they seem to get by without one perfectly fine. They have no claws. Instead of claws, they have flat, mostly dull, armor slabs at the end of their phalanges. Their vision is worse than the majority of species found among us, and their hearing is limited, leaving many high frequencies completely inaudible to them. For example, they are simply unequipped to hear any sounds made by the frumling McCump. Without a translator unit, they may seem like they're ignoring you, but it may be that they, literally, are incapable of hearing the sounds you are making. They are not particularly strong for their size. They are not particularly durable for their size. As a whole, their median intellect is only 2% higher than the median of all Senate races, so they're not particularly special in that regard either. Overall, humans seem to be an inert, non-threatening, prospective member to the Senate, on par with the average among us. But we have made one very important observation that all of you must take away from this presentation. Your very lives depend on it. It is a universal truth among all ecosystems we have encountered that bright coloring is either an attractor that says, Eat me, as being consumed as part of the subject's life cycle, or it is a dire warning saying, Don't eat me, I am poisonous and will kill you. On only one world have we ever encountered both to exist, side by side, in some cases among the same species. That world is Earth, the home planet of the humans. As far as we can tell, their diet includes everything. I, personally, have seen them consume shellfish taken from their seas and boiled until the bright red warning color was clearly evident. I have seen them consume berries marked with a scarlet death warning. They have an entire genre of food that requires the mashed pulp and juices from a fruit from their deadly nightshade family of foods. Yes, you heard that correctly, and that's their term for it. I have seen them take highly acidic fruits and make a refreshing drink from them. I have seen them crush acidic fruits into a glass to consume with their breakfast. The vast majority of them willingly consume ethanol for recreation in their downtime. I have even witnessed humans lighting their drinks on fire before consuming them, which should have prepared me, though it did not, for the reality that they also use capsaicin as a flavoring. They even have a rating system for how intense the capsaicin is. The mildest of their peppers starts at zero, and the fumes from one of those made me uncomfortable. Some of their peppers have a rating of over a million, and humans eat these! There is a type of fish on their world that can kill even a human in a few seconds, and they have highly trained chefs who prepare that very fish for the rich as a show of wealth. So, cadets, I must warn you, do not eat anything from the human world. Nothing. Just don't. And the odds are that they have used something incredibly poisonous as a flavoring agent. If you ask them the ingredients, they'll tell you. But they may very well consider some seasoning so innocuous that they forget to mention it. Or they might have some residue of it on their hands, or utensils, or anywhere in their kitchen. And that could be a deadly mistake for you. Just don't do it. Politely decline and tell them you're not adventurous enough to partake of the foods of their homeworld. And, instead, 
offer them something from your world instead. I know some of you won't believe me, so I encourage you to search through the archives for examples of human cuisine. Read the analysis of the contents. We even have videos of them partaking in many rituals involving food, so that you can witness them eating things like hot wings and the cinnamon challenge. And the consumption of ethanol is so prevalent it's almost impossible to see any human media without it. You are dismissed. Grekgor was unfazed. He had been in custody many times, and he knew how to keep his mouth shut. He knew that they had nothing on him, and it would take a confession from him to hold him for the crimes. Grekgor wouldn't give them the confession. There's nothing you can do to make me talk, were Grekgor's last words to the interrogator, as the interrogator left the confines of the interview chamber. Oh, we know he did it, but we can't prove it, so we need a confession from him. The primary interrogator has a talent for stating the obvious, claiming it was a good problem-solving exercise. Have you tried everything? Yes, everything. The nearby human, a new assignee to the station, chimed in. Uh, how long has it been since that dog ate? Both interrogators swiveled their heads to look at the human. One of them replied, A dog? The human answered back, Yeah, he looks like he's a can-evolved species, right? Dogs. Uh, yeah, well, that he is. So he has an excellent sniffer, right? Yes, how is that relevant? So, when was the last time he ate? He was given his allotted meal this morning. He's overdue for another by an hour. We dare not withhold the food any longer, though. Why? Because I'm hungry, too. I'm getting ready to have my meal. I bet if you let me eat in there, I can scare him into talking. Young human, I do not believe you're making sense. Are you claiming that just by eating in front of the hungry prisoner you can get him talking? Yup, sure am. Well, what's the worst that can happen? The two interrogators looked at each other and then back at the human. Very well, go ahead. <laughs> Excellent. The human vanished from the interrogator's presence for about 20 minutes before returning, carrying a small bag. He entered the interview room and sat down at the table. Howdy, Grek. Mind if I call you Grek? That's not the name I would rather... Yeah, whatever, Grek. See, I'm new here. I don't know nothing about you, and I don't care to. I don't know nothing about this station, and I don't know nothing about being a space cop. I'm a soldier, see? Every human out here in space is either a soldier, a politician, or a science geek. Believe me, I ain't got the brains to be a science geek, and no one should have any use for politicians. Gregor gave a slight and voluntary chuckle at the comment about politicians. But then a quiet fear tickled the back of his mind. Something about the humans, he remembered, deep in his past, a cautionary tale about them. Something about their food, perhaps? He couldn't quite grasp the memory from the deep recesses of his earlier years. As a soldier, I ain't much good at this law enforcement drivel, but this was the post they offered us as part of the exchange program, so here I am, you see? Gregor did, in fact, see, and he nodded his assent. Great. You're probably wondering why they sent me in here. I am. Well, it's because I wanted to come in. Gregor stared at the human. He got their feathers all ruffled, and I thought, gee, that guy looks a lot like a soldier. Maybe I can connect with him. Unlikely. I know my situation. I know my rights. Yeah, they figured you'd say that. I also wanted to come in here because it's time for dinner. And you have a nice table right here. Mind if I eat? Grecker's eyes flared a tiny bit more open at this, but he quickly recovered and remained stone-faced. Go ahead. Did you bring food for me, too? I've been deprived of sustenance beyond the acceptable window of time. Yeah, sure, if you want some. Uh, what have you brought? Well, to start off, I have myself a couple of cold brewskis. The human put one can on the table. Condensation beaded over the entire surface. Grecker's eyes, again, momentarily widened in shock. The human was going to consume something cold enough to pull moisture out of the air? Grecker's eyes shifted to the other can in his hand, and the human used his fingers to rip a hole in the top of the can. The unsavory stench of ethanol wafted across the room as the human raised the can to his mouth hole and began to drink. He drank the entire can in one long swallow before putting the empty can on the table, right in front of Grecker. Ethanol fumes overpowering the other scents wafting from the can. Nothing quite beats a cold brusque at the end of a long day. Next, I've got one of my favorite dishes. Wings. The human pulled out a heater box and unfolded the outer layer to reveal a pile of items. 
is here are chicken wings. And chicken is a small domesticated bird from my home world. Their wings don't have a lot of meat in them, but they sure are delicious. Want one? Gregor sniffed at them, unable to detect anything amiss from them, so he, hesitantly, accepted one from the open container and picked the meat off it, as the human ate one, too. Tasty, right? But they're not complete yet. These here wings need some flavor. The human took out a sealed bowl and put it on the table. This here is my special sauce. These wings need to go into the sauce and get shaken all around to get properly coated. Then they're ready to eat. The human opened the bowl and dumped the wings inside. Gretker recoiled in horror as the toxic fumes erupted from the bowl and forced their way into his nostrils, his face feeling as though it had been set ablaze from the inside out. The tears poured freely from his eyes, wetting the fur on either side of his nose. What is the meaning of this attack? Gretker screamed. Whoa there, Greg. This ain't no attack. I'm just having my dinner. The human said calmly while shaking the bowl. You lie, Gregor hissed back. That is not a food product. That is a weapon, an illegal weapon. Nope. Sorry, pal. This is my dinner. The human removed the top of the bowl, unleashing a wave of fumes. Gregor stood up, sending his chair careening across the floor, and he retreated to the furthest corner of the room. The human took a wing from the bowl and calmly ate it, followed by another and another. This is impossible, Gregor hissed. Nope, sorry pal, quite possible. And tasty. You sure you don't want to try one that's all finished? I'm not even one from the real hot wings, so these here are just mild flavored. The human ripped open the top of the second can of beer and took a sip before continuing to eat the wings. Hey man, this is the last one. Yours if you want it. I'll not let you poison me. Okay pal, suit yourself. The human ate the final wing and downed the rest of the beer. Say, anything you want to tell me about why you're here? No. Okay, but just so you know, they said I could cook your meals for you if you refuse to talk to me. That's torture! Nope, I won't poison you. I won't waste my ingredients on you. But sometimes this sauce can be sticky. It gets into the crevices on hands and permeates the air of the kitchen. I'm sure a tough guy like you can handle that, though. Anyway, I'm off to make you dinner. The human left. Gregor stood in the corner, eyes watering, and contemplated his predicament. I'll talk, he shouted. Interrogator, come in here, I'll talk. Just don't let the human prepare my food.